Okay, so now let's take a look at the other half of that question. So now if we have the function that maps the reals into the non-negatives, the x squared, what we said in this last video was that f does not have a left inverse. So now the question is, does f have a right inverse? Now, if we think about using our mathematical knowledge of how could you have something that when I plug it in, to uh, oh, so what well, basically something that if I plug it into x that I square it, then I could reverse that. What would be some possible functions that basically reverse x squared? Well, let's take a look at some good choices. So let's consider. So uh, what about g? Now let's create this this invert or this maybe if this is a right inverse let's try this g remember we have to have opposite domains and codomains so this is going to be zero to infinity maps into the reals where g of x is equal to the square root of x right so when we think about the square root of x and x squared those seem to have kind of this opposite property of what we might be looking for. So if we want to see if this is a right inverse, what that means is remember that g is going to appear on the right of f. So let's look, let's look at what f composed with g of x, which we said that is just f of g of x. Well, we see that's going to be f of the square root of x, which then says the square root of x quantity squared. Well, that is equal to x. Now we ask ourselves the question, is g still a well-defined function, right? Because indeed we get this seems to be true, but have we cut corners? And did we actually allow every element in the domain to be mapped to something in the codomain? We should check that. But indeed we see that, yes, you can plug in any non-negative number into a square root, and then you get back a real number. Excellent. So what we get here is yes g is a right inverse. So this function does not have a left inverse, but it does have a right inverse. But is it the only one? Ooh, so could we have more than one inverse? At least for our left and right hand inverses. Right, so when we've done this in the past with looking at this in college algebra, pre-calculus, those types of classes, we only ever found one, and then we're like, great, that's my inverse. But because we're looking at left and right, hand, left and right inverses, can we possibly have another? And so let's see, what else, what would be another way that if I was to think about plugging something into a square that I could still get back x? Well, there should be a square root present, right? But what about a negative? So let's look at h that's going to map, again, 0 to infinity into the reals, where we define h of x is going to be negative square root of x. Again, this we can check to see, is this a well-defined function? Does every element in the domain get mapped to something in the codomain? Well, yes, I take in any non-negative number, I take the square root of that, great, that's good. I have a negative of that, that's still a real number, great. So this is still a well-defined function, and we check the same property that we did over here, where we're going to look again if now, what if h is on the right-hand side? So this is f of h of x, and so this is going to be f of negative square root of x. So this is negative square root of x quantity squared, which gives me x again. And so this is also a right inverse. So h is also a right inverse. So what that means is that not only do we possibly have existence, we might not have uniqueness here. So functions can have multiple left and right, I guess, 
right inverses. So if it has a left inverse, it might have more than one. If it has a right inverse, it might have more than one. So that's, again, something very unique that we have to be careful of when we're looking at left and right hand inverses.